الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is he Allah who sent his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with guidance with the glorious Quran and with the religion or the deen of truth al-Islam so that he may establish it over all ways of life even though the pagans may detest it we glorify Allah and we thank our creator for all his bounties his favors and his blessings upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a mercy to the whole world. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent and he is a perfect example for all of us. We all look to attain Jannah, paradise. That's our ultimate goal. If that's not our ultimate goal in life, then we need to relook at our real purpose. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us about an easy way to gain that Jannah, that paradise. And he says to his companions, Kullukum yadkhulul Jannah illa man abba. Every one of you will enter paradise, will enter Jannah, except the one who refuses. And the companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, wa mayyaba, O Prophet of Allah, who will refuse paradise? This is, this is what we all would like. So who will refuse paradise? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man ata'ani, the one who obeys me, he will enter paradise. And the one who disobeys me, that person is showing some rejection or he's rejecting paradise. And so it all comes down to the obedience to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That lives need to be lived 
in accordance with what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam brought that everything about us when people look at us they see within us the the practices the traditions of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he he said about his morals his characteristics innama bu'ithu li utammima makarim al akhlaq verily i have been sent to perfect behavior verily i have been sent to perfect behavior this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to his companions and allah says about him in the quran wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim and verily you are of an exalted nature allah is attesting to that in the quran that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is of an exalted nature behavior wise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived that which was sent to him he demonstrated in it in his life when aisha radiyallahu anha was asked about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she said kana khuluquhu al quran verily his behavior his uh, whole demeanor was that of the quran his characteristics uh, that were displayed were that which were in the or, or are in the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana verily in the messenger of allah is a perfect example for you and who will take this example who will look at muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as that example for their lives liman kana yarju allah wal yawm al akhir wa dhakara allah kathira he is a perfect example for those who have not hope of meeting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have the hope for the last day they know that this world is not an everlasting world this world will come to an end and each and every one of us we will return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everlasting life is when we go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the world will come to an end and each and every one of us will stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that final day that's what the people who really will take muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as an example they have that hope that they will meet with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have that hope and understanding there is a, that assurance in their heart that there is a hereafter that there this world is not the end when you die that's the end and they constantly remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are always remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is why we we pray after every after every salah we make a dua allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik o oh allah help me to always remember you never be disconnected from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do 
there is that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us that you eat you've completed your eating you drink completed your drinking you you leave your homes you go back to your homes you go to bed at night you wake up in the morning you go to for the call of nature you leave the bathroom whatever you do there is that connection that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah help me to remember you help me to be thankful to you and help me to worship you in the best way and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters let's look at some of the characteristics of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as we look at them let's look at ourselves internalize them and see if we really are following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even before he became a prophet he was that person who was considered in the eyes of Quraysh to be an honest truthful person people used to lodge their belongings with him because of his honesty because of his truthfulness there, there is an example when he became prophet Allah gave him the message he went to the Mount of Safa and he said to the people he gathered them and he said to them if I was to tell you that there is an army behind this mountain ready to attack you would you believe me and they said certainly we will believe you why because he was the truthful he was al amin they, they, he was honest they, they, they believed that about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he called them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they said is this why you have gathered us you know you they believed in in the in in that fact that if he was to tell them that there is an army behind them up there but when he told them that he is a messenger and he's calling them to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they did not believe in him my dear brothers and my dear sisters we interact with people on a daily basis we, we may have businesses and even if we don't have businesses it, we make promises we, we say things to each other you know husbands and wives they make promises to each other that we, uh, uh, children make promises to their parents and parents make promises to their children and, and sometimes you find that th there is not that uh, honesty in our relationship with one another and we're not truthful to one another and we do not keep our promises when we make promises to people and, and so think about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he fulfilled his promises and he was always truthful and he was that honest individual Th these are characteristics that as Muslims we ought to have in our lives when, when we speak to our children 
when we speak to our mothers and fathers, when we interact with our sons and daughters and our brothers and sisters, when we interact with our spouses, there must be that understanding that whatever comes from us is the truth and we are honest. And that's in following the practices of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a very pleasant, cordial, friendly person. Even though he was the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not everything about him was seriousness. He was always smiling. How often do we have that same interaction with others that we are always making them feel comfortable, bringing happiness to them? You know, we, we, we pray a beautiful prayer, a prayer of, our, of the believers before us. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata ayun. Our Lord, grant us from our spouses and our progeny those who will be the comfort of our eyes. You want comfort, you want happiness, you want peace, tranquility. That when you are with each other, when you see one another, there is that happiness being displayed. And so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was that type of individual. And he said to his companions, Kullu ma'roofin sadaqa wa inna min al ma'roofin an talqa akhaka bi wajhin talq. Every good act, every good thing that you do, it is sadaqa, it is charity. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and from among the good things, that will be considered charity is that whenever you see one another, whenever you meet your brother or you meet your sister, you, you, you have that smile on your face. You make the person comfortable. You make the person happy. You may have something that you want to say to the person that may, may not be good news. But here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, make sure the environment is a comfortable environment, a peaceful environment. The reception is a comfortable one, a happy one, a peaceful one. And so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he used to make sure that he always smiled with people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was indeed a, a, a man who took care of his family. And he wanted to make sure that even though he was the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he was human, man just like us. And he wanted to make sure that he fulfilled his responsibilities as a, f a member of the family. And so when you hear from his family, the Prophet ﷺ used to mend his own clothes. And he used to take care, you know, fulfill his household duties. And he was that family man who gave prestige and honor to his family. 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was a humble person. In some this world that we live in, you you see that humility diminishing so much from people. This this man who conquered Mecca. He's riding into Mecca, and he is humble, not boastful, not proud of, of you know demonstrating some degree of kibriya, pride. But here is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, very comfortable you know, a humble individual and when people whom he could have taken revenge against ask, what will you do about us? He says to them, Antum tulaqa, go, you are free. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we sometimes we accomplish so many things in life and because of our accomplishment, our status, we tend to belittle others. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, look at those who are less fortunate than you, not the ones who have more than you. And you will tend to recognize uh, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you will in no way belittle others because you or we could have been in the position of those who have less than us. And so always be humble because that's what matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaqum. O people, we created you from a male and female. We made you into nations and tribes. You may be black, you may be white, you may be rich, you may be poor. You may be intelligent, educated, uneducated. You may have status, you may not have status. We want you to know one another. And just always remember, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaqum. Verily, the best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who is most righteous most God-fearing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he, he always strive for dignity. That people, it doesn't matter your color, your status, your education. It doesn't matter what your resources are. He wanted to make sure that every individual was uh, enjoying a dignified life. And you saw people around him people of different colors, people of different backgrounds. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lifted them up. There was a time in, in the Arabian Peninsula when women had no, when women, they had no status. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continuously make sure that they were given their status. He, he made sure that they were treated well. And so he said to his companions, خيركم 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 The best of you are those who are best to their women. And I am best to my women or to my family. 
and, and so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he he demonstrated that to show that dignity for each and every individual. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he he was very charitable, very generous, and he never turn people away even though he was poor he always looked to help and if he himself could not he would find others to bring help to those who were in need Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he never liked oppressors and sometimes you may be looking at oppressors in terms of leaders of country but we need to look at ourselves. We might be oppressing our own families. We might be oppressing our spouses, our children. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to his companions, Unsur akhaka dhaliman aw madhluman. Help your brother whether he is the oppressor or he is the oppressed. And the companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we, we can help the one who is being oppressed. How can we help the oppressor? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, help him in such a way that he does not oppress others guide him talk to him counsel him so that he does not oppress others these are some beautiful characteristics of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was indeed a man sent as an example for us if we follow him our lives my dear brothers and my dear sisters would be good lives if we follow him we would leave a good legacy for generations to come if we follow him and inculcate those characteristics within our lives we will make a difference in society we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to follow the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand that whatever he gives us as good that we ought to put it into practice. Whatever he says is wrong that we need to stay away from it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us so in the Qur'an. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever he has brought to you as good, take it, practice it. And whatever he has brought to you saying that this is wrong, keep away from it. That's how we will be successful, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. That's how we show that we want Jannah, we want paradise, and we are not rejecting the paradise that Allah has promised unto us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril mu'min wa minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim.
Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Ridwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin Amma ba'd My dear brothers and my dear sisters uh, One of the greatest characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, that compassion and love and kindness that he demonstrated in his life. And he, he, he demonstrated that for, for everyone. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you but as a mercy unto the worlds, the world of humankind, the world of animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as that rahmah, that mercy. And we, we, we saw this, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even people, they, they turned against him. Even his enemies, he had that rahmah, that compassion for them. He would call upon Allah. When he was asked to, you just tell us and we will bring the wrath of Allah upon them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, leave my people, uh, uh, you know, forgive them for they do not know. Leave them for chance will come out of them who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We saw that compassion even with children. Hassan and Hussein, they would climb on his back while he was praying. And if there were women and children in his congregation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who had the whole Quran with him, he would shorten his prayers out of compassion for the women and children and the elderly and the sick. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told his companions to be kind to the animals. That even, he, he says that someone will go to paradise just because that person helped, went down in the well, brought up water, to help to quench the thirst of a dog. The, the, the beauty in being compassionate even unto the animals. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says about him in the Quran, it is he, Allah, who sent his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with guidance, with the glorious Quran, and with the deen of truth al-Islam, so that he may make it dominant, established it over all other ways of life, even though the pagans may detest it. We have a legacy, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and that legacy, it, it, it lies in the following of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to these beautiful morals, characteristics. We live in a time when we see a society that is so immoral, a society in which people have drifted away from that rahmah, that mercy, that compassion, that kindness. We were given that legacy, it was handed down to us. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, they implemented those beautiful uh, morals within their lives, they changed the entire world at that time. And we have that within us. We have the glorious Quran. 
we have the Dean of Truth, Al Islam. Let's make a difference in our lives and a difference in the lives of others. Laqad amarna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al Azim haythu qal Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika rasulika Muhammad wa arda Allahumma an khulafaihi ala raba Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Alim wa nisita tilbaqin al bashirin bil jannah wa nsairi al-sahaba wa nitabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi sanin la yawmiddin Allahumma aiza islam wal muslimin Allahumma nawwir kulubana bin nur al-iman wa thabbit kulubana ala al-deen al-islam wa la taj'al fi kulubina gila lilladhina amanu rabbana inna karufu rahim Allahumma la tada' lana fi maqumbina hadha dhamban illa ghafarta ولا هم إلا فرجت ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا دينا إلا قضيت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يعمد بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض كما لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أكمل الصلاة